Hello again, Ian Stoker with Mastermind Games, back for another painting video, this time from the new Transformers Deep Cuts on Painted by WizKids, Bumblebee. So, obviously, Transformers appeals to children was originally made for them, but something to be perfectly clear on is, this is a hobby video, it's going to take about an hour, it's probably going to bore a child to death, and two, at the end of it I'll be gluing Bumblebee onto his base with a thick cyanoacrylate super glue, and this stuff can be really dangerous, because this will bond to skin instantly, it can glue, it will glue your hands shut if you're not careful, and it says if you, if eye or mouth contact occurs, get medical attention immediately, so this is not meant for children, you know, copper, all that jazz, but references. As opposed to the cartoon, I am painting based more off of the toy line. Two great references on that would be this. Transformers Identification Price Guide by Mark Delomo. So, using this as one reference. And the other, uh -oh, something fell off, being this Transformers Legacy by IDW Publishing. And this is an art book on mostly the package design with this painting in particular reference there. Another thing of interest to me is on the card back. That we've got a picture of Optimus Prime, but also RC, who is not part of this wave. So this implies that there's going to be more to come. I see my camera is doing bad things again. I'll try to fit and angle that. There we go. So I'm going to work from the lowest area to the highest. Starting with Stormy Gray 09088, the Sub Master Series color. I'm shifting from this to Army Painter War Paints because this is becoming difficult to find locally. I'm going to use a pouncy here. Getting a brush out, using just enough water to thin the paint. I'm going to start, I think, from the top down, so we'll go on the shoulder, go near the neck. Now, Bumblebee and Cliffjumper are two very similar characters, so I, there's a certain temptation to get a second Bumblebee into a Cliffjumper paint scheme at some point, but with that in mind, I'm going to Give it a minute, give it some time, see if they do unique sculpts for Cliff Jumper and other characters that were essentially palette swaps, although the original toy Cliff Jumper had a completely different uh, head and body style than Bumblebee did. But again, very similar. And apparently, according to that collector's book, both characters were available. Test? Test, test? Okay. That was weird, my camera conked out on me again. So according to that book, the uh, identification and price guide, both characters were available in both red and yellow. And there are rumors of Bumblebee being available in gr or, uh, green and blue as well. So I'll just move this out there. These come pre-primed, so I am trusting the primer on it in this case. Brushing some of that off the hip. I'll be gluing 
wanted him to his base at the very end for a very specific reason. And I think this indent on the back, which should have been a spare tire, I'm going to take out in the gray. Now the card back shows a very simple color scheme. I'll be uh, shading and highlighting and uh, picking up some lighting effects by the time I'm done. This is going to be a lot darker by the time I finish. But I have been a fan of Transformers since the original iteration and I've followed it ever since. I'm not the mo I don't really collect what I have outside of uh, comic books and shows, but again, it's something that was a big part of me, and still is. My friends is hoping this is the start of uh, some kind of Transformers miniatures game. I personally think it feels more like a test to see if this is marketable, and if so, that could happen in the future. We'll just see. But... In G1, Bumblebee was a, for his tech spec bio, an espionage agent, a spy. He was the first to encounter and befriend a human, Spike Witwicky in the original cartoon, and Buster Witwicky in the original comic. Which, both of which diverged substantially from each other, even from the first, uh, issue slash episode. Okay, I'm not worried about the bottom of this book. It's going to be glued squarely to the base. So I'm going to set him down. Hope he stays put and take the base. This did not come, so this did not come primed. I primed it white for a specific reason. Phoenix Red 09005. And that reason is, I am going to be replicating this uh, grid on there, or something similar to it, to add a little color to that. And switching over to a larger brush. This will work out fine. I'll be able to get part of it now. I'll have to get the rest after some of this dry so I have a chance, place to grip it. I am getting the edge as well. Using just enough paint to thin, or just enough water to thin the paint, excuse me. Alright. Well, that's uh Gonna have to do till that dries, so let that gray dry. Come back in a minute. Alright, I finished up that base off camera. Sun Yellow 09008. So this kit came with both decals and both water slide decals and stickers for the fashion assemblies, and this is blocked up. So paper clip down the nozzle. I'm going to try, once I finish painting, to do the water slide decals because those will last, I feel those will last better, but I had problems last time I tried using one, so if it doesn't work, I'll use the stickers. Just worry about that at the end. And this will look fine by the end. Don't worry about the face, I'll pick that out. Another color. Being careful around the gray, as I do not want to get the neck. Okay. Let's do the body, then the extremities. Again, being careful around the 
show my neck which I think I nicked already on accident uh, so that means I'll have to touch up later Switching my grip as needed. Now in G1 there were, I believe, four, arguably five toys of Bumblebee, the original. And then Goldbug, which was described as having the brain of Bumblebee in the bio in the cartoon during the end of uh, season three, when Optimus Prime was resurrected after his death in the movie, Bumblebee would be rebuilt as Goldbug. And in the original comics, Bumblebee would be destroyed during a crossover with G.I. Joe and rebuild it Goldbug at, as Goldbug at that point. But the third version was a pretender version of the character, which had a shell it could fit in, and the debatable fifth version apparently is that the uh, Bumblebee portion of this Pretender's character was released on its own without the uh, shell. And there was a non-transforming Action Master version, which was controversial because they were Transformers that didn't transform and were the last G1 toys released. And in uh, the original cartoon, Bumblebee would be one of the few original Autobots to survive the movie, but wouldn't really be used after that. In the comics, he died several times, actually. First time during this aforementioned G.I. Joe crossover, where it was rebuilt as Goldbug, then later on, Goldbug would be, would be killed by a by Starscream, empowered to near godlike ability by a relic called the Underbase, only to be rebuilt as a pretender by Ratchet. In fact, in the original comic book, they tied it in with the Marvel superheroes for the first three issues of it before dropping it abruptly, in which Autobot Gears in the third issue teamed up with Spider-Man. And there are characters that would appear in the comic later that I feel would have been members of the Avengers or other Marvel heroes had it continued. Or had they continued um, using those characters? It was uh, one of the weirdest inconsistencies. Oh boy. I'm clearly bad news from my computer, and that's because I've dropped hundreds of frames. Hang on a minute. The joys of technical difficulties strike again. The more technology advances, the more it turns out like that Mel Brooks movie Spaceballs. Specifically the climax where the cancel button to the self-destruct is out of order. <sighs> Alright. Real careful where the ankle ends and the foot starts. Now the toy had the bumper in black. 
but I'll do mine in silver because I think that's a better distinction. And again, I'm not worried about the bottom of the foot since that is going to be squarely glued on the base. Again, with that thick cyanoacrylate super glue that is definitely, definitely not safe for children to use. And on another note, once I'm done painting, I will be and my brush goes flying. Once I'm done painting, I will be varnishing off camera, which involves an aerosol spray can, which is another thing children should not be using. So Again, this is something that would probably appeal to children, but it's not intended. Alright. There we go. Now this is going to be interesting because I've got this here. Can I cover up that Made in China way? Maybe. I'm going to say maybe I can keep that covered up. I definitely do not want that showing through at the end. Worst case, I think I'll have to use multiple layers if that first one didn't cut it. Got a very awkward grip here, but it's about the only grip I can do. Being very careful right here not to nick the wheel. base coat and start shading. Alright, some of that's still drying, but I can move on. I can find the paint I'm looking for. Plate mail metal. Not too much of this. Using just enough water to thin the paint. Carefully going over the face. So this is a metallic steel. Now, this is based off of a generic gun that Bumblebee used sometimes in the cartoon. Uh, only the, uh, out of the original toys, only the Action Master and Pretender versions actually had any weapons. Okay, so face, pistol, and the hubcaps on the wheel. Very simple paint scheme. Doing this also requires a lot of patience and attention to detail. I need to touch up that and that. You know, that should be okay. I'll get it fixed. Okay. Then, the headlight. I know notice I'm using my fingers of my off hand to brace my dominant hand. the 
brush moist but not overly wet. Look the same. Short controlled strokes. I do have a tendency to stop talking when I'm focusing. Let's get it set aside somewhere. I gotta take the base off. And not white. And do half the grid. The other half will be done later. So it's not too wide. Draw the paint in on it. the spacing as even as possible. Thing about this grid, this grid was the 80s everywhere. Okay, with that dry, then I can start shading. Okay, about time to start shading, so let's finish up this grid first. Again, that white. I'll do this first because this is the least impressive thing I'll be doing in this video. And I am bracing my dominant hand with the fingers of my off hand. needed. 
the woods brings something of a bad habit of mind when I'm hyper focused. But one thing about the uh, art book I'm using as a reference, it also has uh, the package images, the big uh, battle scenes. And some of them from this third series actually show cities on Earth with big craters in them. Kind of a more apocalyptic bent on Transformers that uh, only had the one appearance. So Black and Steel 09205. This is a Reaper Master Series color. I am thinning with one part water to one part paint to make it into a wash. For base coats, you want to go from the lowest part of the model to the highest. Shading high to low, highlighting low to high. And particularly dark colors like straight black, you'll need two to three parts water to one part paint. I'm going to start the base here. Get the pistol. See it's going into the recessed areas almost. Now with Dorkman, make him stand out more. So I've got to be careful where I grip him. Yellow 09007. This looks a little tricky, I think, but I got it. Moving again with one part water to one part paint. Most of the surface area here is so flat, there aren't too many recesses for this to pull into, but it'll work out fine.
and on the bottom well, looks like I can partially cover up that made in China logo but I'd like to get rid of the whole thing if possible we can use a little extra on the highlight but let me think a second do a head next careful around the face, not to get any of this on there. It's going to get tricky no matter how I do it. I'm not concerned about the windshield, that's going to get picked out with the lighting effect. on one section at a time. Keep my brush wet. That's way too much. This shading does have the longest set time or cure time just because of the uh, extra moisture in it, but that will also be affected by temperature and humidity. So, hotter weather and lower humidity will reduce drying times, while colder weather and higher humidity will lengthen trying times. And I got some of that on the pistol. Let's blot that out. That was tricky, but let that dry and move on. The last layer of shading is dry enough, I can move on. But first, I'm going to prep for some lighting effects. Matte white. Using just enough water to thin the paint. Starting in the eyes. Now I'm going to do the windshield. all the way up to the edge and filling in the spillover from the other colors. 
can see a bit of white on the horn here, but that'll come off when I highlight. Be real careful right here not to nick the arm or any portion I don't want to. difficult when I have to concern myself with the positioning of the right arm. Much easier right here. And the lighting effects will come before the highlighting. Let's adjust the headlights now. Stops the barrel. Do this. Got very specific ideas how I want to do this. Okay. Now I'll need to dry completely before I actually apply the lighting, but in the meantime, matte black the last shade. This bottle is almost empty, but I have a spare on hand. Actually, that, that's going to be enough. So for this, I'm going to need to thin it with two to three parts water to one part paint. Otherwise, it'll darken things too much. Let's start. Okay, there's a problem. That's still had some of the orange in there. The miracle be all in there, so try again. Shoes. Okay, I think I'm okay. Keeping the brush very wet on this. And you don't need to restrict yourself to always holding the model right side up, just so you're aware. It can actually be very advantageous to do it otherwise. Thank you. 
getting the steel. The other side, that make sure my camera is not conking out on me. Yeah, my system has had a lot of, uh, yeah, I just had a lot of technical difficulties with my system, so it's not for lack of trying, but still very frustrating when I'm trying to do this and I am held back by technical difficulties I don't know how to fix. Zero nine zero zero nine. I'm gonna use this again, but for right now, if I can get some out, not a whole lot, just a little bit. I'm gonna put that in the headlights. So keep with the lighting effect to let some of the white show through. some of it out. I got a bit of sizing. Let's try that again. Okay. Now, Phoenix Red again, 09005. Shields the lighting effect as well. In this case, I'm dropping things all over the place off camera. Uh, I'm drop 215 frames somehow. That's terrible. Necessary. Uh, 
glasses thing? Like? I guess not. Joys of technical difficulties try strike again. Keep my brush wet. Get any eyes. to dry completely before I highlight and then we'll look into applying the sticker. Right, looking good so far. <sighs> Camera glitches aside. Oh boy. Alright, time to highlight. So switch into a dry brushing technique. Uh, uniform gray. Most of the paint out on the paper towel to look like it's not left. And then dust the area to be affected. Going against any raised edges. typically focus on the most readily visible areas only. So you can see it's catching on those edges of the legs. my paint as needed. And this dries almost instantly. Not quite, but almost. Lemon yellow zero nine zero zero nine. You need your brush to be completely dry for this, so just bear that in mind. I have several on hand that are suitable, so.
crushing ass meat. here to take care of that gray. Again, too much uh, paint on the brush. I'm not dropping hundreds of frames a second, which has already happened twice in this video. Well, some of that made in China thing is still showing through. So that's unfortunate. Silver zero nine two zero seven. Not too much of this. Just need to select the right brush. Careful attention to the face. You can try to get the angle on his cheeks and the bridge of his nose and the lips. and apply a decal to the chest, but first that needs to dry completely for a few minutes. And I'm still dropping frames over crying out loud. All right, time to apply the decal. So this is a, I'm gonna try the water slide decal first. 
So taking small scissors, carefully trim this out. That's set aside, I'm going to need the rest of that for later. So trim this down as close as possible without making the insignia. sit in there for about 30 seconds. Should do it, so this should attach it back now, which it is, and now it's on my thumb. Oh boy. Okay, now carefully get that over. Take a brush, keeping it wet, and just move that around to where I want it. It's about center. I'm going to take a paper towel and just blot out the excess water. Okay, it looks like it worked. Last time I had one of these, it did not work at all. Fell off, caused problems, so we're great now. Last step then, I'm taking that cyanoacrylate super glue, thick kind. Again, this is not safe for children. Just a razor thin line there. Let's make it on the bottom here. This bottle's about shot. That should be plenty. That's what I need. And I'm going to take the face, avoiding the water slide decal until it dries, and it was going to. Let's do it a little off center. Good. Let's hold that down about oh, 10 20 seconds. That's got it. All right. And that wraps up Bumblebee from Transformers Deep Cuts. Three more characters in this uh, lineup, and they're coming up next. It fits us. Oh, almost. There we go. So, doing a Decepticon next. Until then, I am Ian Sticky with Mastermind Games, signing out.